And the four panelists today are uh, Joe Pivovar, and I will go in the order they're sitting, Samuel Gamtasa, Brad Walter, and Jim Marshall. So as I go to each of them, I will provide more detail about each person. So um, to start with, and I will just give you a little overview of the debate. Uh, so first, the panelists will talk on their, um, on their particular specific topics. And then after this, um, the floor will be open for questions and you will have a chance to ask whatever burning issues you have, burning questions you have, and then depending on your questions, we'll, uh, they will be addressed to whoever is, has an expertise in that particular area. Okay, so we'll start with Joe Pivovar. So Joe Pivovar holds a PhD in Geography from the University of Waterloo. And he held a Canada Research Chair of Tournament at the University of Regina for 10 years from 2006 to 2016. Um, so as a geographer, uh, he is with the um, Department of Geography and Environmental Sci Sciences at the UFR. As a geographer, Joe has an academic interest in the interrelationships between humans and the environment. Um, his research is focused on the environmental impacts of recent climate changes, particularly on the northern Great Plains of North America and on the sea ice cover of the Arctic Ocean. By analyzing the archive of remote sensing satellite images dating back to the early 1970s, Joe has developed an understanding of how ecosystems have been responding to climate change, both in Canada and around the world. So um, the question that I would like you, Joe, um, to talk about, so is global warming real? And what does carbon have to do with it? Okay. Thank you. And uh, welcome this afternoon. So is global warming real? Uh, yes, global warming is very real. Scientists have been collecting data, uh, uh, from, they've collected data from, from thousands and thousands of weather stations around the world, from ocean temperature buoys, glacier studies uh, and from satellites and there's unequivocal evidence that the earth's climate is warming some examples of what we've observed since 19 since the 1880s the global average temperature has increased by almost one degree 2016 was the warmest year on record and 2017 although we're not, not quite done yet it's on track to be at least as warm as 2016. <clears throat> 16 of the 17 warmest years on record have occurred since the year 2000. Precision measurements of the world's mountains, glaciers, the Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets, and the Arctic Ocean sea ice cover show them to be consistently shrinking. And when all that all ice is shrinking, since 1900, global mean sea level uh, has risen by 20 centimeters. Most, many of the observed changes that we're, we're seeing are unprecedented over the past thousands of years. So, based on indisputable facts made by made from thousands and thousands of independent measurements, yes, global warming is real. What's causing this warming, though, um, seems to generate more debate among politicians and the general public than in the scientific community. <clears throat> climate scientists are certain that humans are influencing the climate system. But how can we be so sure? Well, back in the 1980s, uh, when rising temperatures and melting glaciers were beginning to be noticed, the United Nations uh, wanted some answers, so they, could, so, they, so they convened a meeting of all the leading climate scientists in the world, so they could compare their data and observations. This group became known as the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Since its membership is so diverse, no single scientist or political viewpoint could dominate their conclusions. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change releases a global climate status report every six to seven years. And when, we released their first, when they released their first report in 1990, it was based on the input from a couple hundred climate scientists. The last report, released in 2014, was based on the work of over 10,000 scientists from 195 countries. And based on this evidence, 97% of the climate scientists agree that global warming is happening and we are the cause. So we're talking about climate, a carbon tax today and you may be asking yourself, well, okay, what does carbon have to do with global warming? Uh, carbon is everywhere. It's found in the oceans, 
in the air, in plants, in animals, in all living things. But let's look at the work of carbon in plants specifically. We know that there's this process called photosynthesis that happens inside the leaves of plants. Photosynthesis is a chemical reaction that uses the energy from the sun to convert carbon and water from the air into glucose and oxygen. The plant uses its glucose to grow and it, and, and it stores the carbon that is just captured from the air. It stores that carbon in its stems and its leaves, its roots, and it's in its mass. So it stores the carbon there. When a plant dies, it begins to decompose or we burn it. Uh, the photosynthesis process is somewhat reversed and all that carbon that's stored up in the plant is then re-released into the atmosphere. Stepping back in time a few million years, the earth was inhabited by a rich array of tropical <coughs> plants and animals, dinosaurs and the like, right? Um, when some of these plants and animals died, they were buried in the bottoms of swamps and oceans before they had a chance to decompose. And over millions of years, they were covered by more and more layers of sediment. And as the heat and pressure from all these layers uh, increased, they slowly transformed these dead organisms to, into coal, gas, and oil. So when we burn these fossil fuels today, we release the carbon that they stored so long ago back, so long ago, we released that carbon back into the air. So what's the big deal about releasing carbon into the air? The air is composed mostly of nitrogen and oxygen, but just a bit of argon and carbon mixed in for good measure. But when it comes to heat energy, carbon has the biggest role to play. Carbon molecules in the air operate a bit like a sieve or a screen. Okay? So the purpose of a screen, as you know, is, is, is something that allows small things to pass through while blocking the larger things out. So it is with so it is with carbon molecules in the air. They allow small things to pass between them, but they block the larger things. This all happens at a molecular scale. We can't see it, but it is very real. So let's go back to the global warming for a minute. We know that everything on the earth gives off some amount of heat. You, me, rocks, the oceans, even glaciers give off heat, although a little bit in tiny amounts, but they even give off heat. So let's go back, and if there's only a little bit of carbon in the air, most of that heat energy rising from the ground can still squeeze through the, the holes in this, in, this, uh, in this screen, and they still squeeze through and escape into the space. But if there's a lot of carbon in the air, the screen gets tighter, and most of the heat energy rising th from the ground gets stuck, and it can't get through. So Vic, the more, cost, the more fossil fuels we burn, the more carbon is released in the air, the more carbon there is in the air, the tighter this carbon screen gets, and the more heat that's trapped by the air. And the more heat that gets trapped by the air, the warmer the climate gets. So just a very quick question to you. You know, last week when it was minus 30, in November, to tell you the truth, I wish that global warming was a little bit more severe. So won't a warmer climate be better for us? Well, you're right. Saskatchewan can be a very cold place, <laughs> and uh, warmer, uh, certainly a warmer climate might be might be a good thing for us, right? Um, so climate models predict that in the next 30 years, the climate of Saskatchewan will in fact be warmer and wetter, and certainly this has the potential to <coughs> allow us to enjoy the weather a bit more, but allow farmers, for example, to extend their growing season and allow the int introduction of new crops. However, we worry. And this could be like a Trojan horse. Although we anticipate having more rainfall, the hotter temperatures will quickly suck any of that additional moisture out of the plants and leave them in worse shape than they are now. Thus, we expect under warmer temperatures, Saskatchewan will be even more arid in the future than it is now, despite an increase in precipitation, just because it's hotter. Saskatchewan has been historically a cold place, especially in the winter, and we've benefited from that. You may not think so, but we have. Since the insects, uh, since many insects cannot survive in a deep freeze, 